Hi, I'm Liz, and I'm going to be walking you through the metadata files downloaded from the query function of the Chesapeake Data Explorer. To access the downloaded files, you will need to go through the query form on the home page of the Data Explorer and select the metadata files you would like to include in your data set. Once you hit Get Results on the query form, CSV files will automatically download containing the data you queried and any metadata files requested. The metadata files are labeled CMC stations, CMC parameters, CMC groups, and CMC calibration samples. Let's first take a look at the station's metadata file, which will give you additional information about each station included in your query dataset, and is the same for both benthic and water quality datasets. Column A indicates the unique station code based on the station name and the group code assigned for each station. This is the column that you will need to relate this table to the dataset file if multiple stations are included in your query. Next, we have the station name, which is the name designated by each individual group. Next, we have the station long name, which is a more descriptive name also designated by the group. Then we have the latitude and longitude coordinates in NAD 83 and decimal degrees. And then we have the description and the comments field, which are also designated by the group when they upload the station into the database. The rest of the data points include water body, city and county, and HUC codes are all designated by the Data Explorer when the station is uploaded to the system. The next file is the group's metadata file, which will give you additional information about each group included in your query dataset, and is the same for both benthic and water quality datasets. The first column contains the unique group code assigned by the Data Explorer. This code can be used to relate this table to your dataset if multiple groups are included in your query. The next column contains the group name associated with that group code. And then we have any additional contact information that the group wants to provide in the Data Explorer. This includes a contact name, email, phone numbers, a description of the monitoring program, and a URL link to a website, and any mailing addresses for that program. Next, we have the parameters metadata file, which would give you additional information about each parameter included in your query dataset. This metadata file is only available for water quality datasets. Column A contains the unique parameter code assigned in the Chesapeake Data Explorer, and this code can be used to relate this table to your dataset if multiple parameters are included in your query. Next, we have the common name for each parameter and the units for each parameter. Column D contains the Chesapeake Bay Program method code, which indicates which data are passed along to the Bay Program. If this column contains a 999 in the field, it means that the Bay Program does not currently have a method code in their system, and therefore that data is not passed along. We are constantly working with the Bay Program to update these codes as new methods come into the Data Explorer. The next few columns are self-explanatory with tier level, the matrix, air or water, title or non-title, and then we get into the analytical method. So column I indicates whether the parameter is taken with a probe, in a lab, or with a kit. And then column J indicates the approved procedure, which shows the US EPA method or any other standard methods that are approved. Column K contains the type of equipment for that parameter, and this will have generic types of equipment used for any parameters and then any specific manufacturers as applicable. These list of specific manufacturers is not exhaustive and just gives a few examples of acceptable options. The next few columns 
describe various QA criteria and calibration criteria needs for each parameter. I just want to point out that in column T, we have included a tier justification field, which indicates which tier that parameter falls into, tier one, tier two, or tier three, and the justification for any provisional data provided. Continuing down the spreadsheet, we have column AA that gives a more detailed description of each parameter. And the last two columns indicate any upper or lower range checks that are included in data upload to the system. Next, we have the calibration data file. This file contains any information about calibrations that occurred for the sampling events included in your query data set and is only available for water quality data sets. Some groups do not track calibration data in the Data Explorer and therefore do not have calibration information associated with their data points, but that doesn't necessarily mean that their equipment isn't calibrated. It just means that they don't upload that data. You can always contact the group for more information about their calibration samples. This file is set up just like the water quality samples file with date, time, station name, the unique station code, latitude and longitude coordinates, and the group code and sample ID as the first few columns in the file. We do not have a depth column associated with calibration data, so column I starts with the parameters data points. The parameters included are listed in alphabetical order, and each parameter has three columns associated with it. The first column will be the actual value for that parameter. The second column will be the parameter code associated in the Data Explorer. And the third column will be the units associated with that parameter. This order will repeat down the spreadsheet for every calibration parameter included in your data set. The last few columns in this file include the observational data recorded for that sampling event, as well as any comments recorded for that sampling event. This information is also included in the water quality dataset download file. Thanks for watching and check out our other videos to learn about additional functionality of the database.